All right, it's Tiffany, founder and executive director of Crafting Change, and I want to welcome everybody to our Thursday night summer series of crocheting with Melanie. And we are here tonight. We're going to be crocheting Granny Squares. So I'm super excited. Yay, it's really exciting. This is something new and different that we've never done before. And so I'm just going to turn it over to Melanie. So let me get you spotlighted and I will let you get started. All right. Uh, so what we're going to do tonight, I'm going to show you how to do it first. And then we're going to do the kind of social chatting part about the granny square afterwards. So I'm going to use just a cotton yarn tonight because it's a little bit stiffer. So I might be easier to uh, see the stitches for you. I'm going to use a size H five millimeter hook. And you just need some scissors and some blunt or darning needles. Okay. Now I work by diagram with a granny square. I cannot master a written pattern. So for me, it's always a diagram. Okay, so we're gonna start off, gonna make our slip knot. Okay, and then we're gonna chain four. One, two, three, four chain four and then we are going to slip stitch back into this first chain right here right in here take that yarn and just pull it all the way through so you're gonna have like a little teeny tiny circle so kind of what we did before crocheting and around with the soap sacks and the hats. So this should, everybody should have that. If it's too small for you, feel free just to widen it a little bit because we're gonna cinch it back together later. So don't worry. Okay, right. I'll do it one more time really quick. Okay. Slip knot, chain four, one, two, three, four. And slip stitch into the first one and make a little circle. Right there. Okay. Now we go to our next round, which starts with, and it would always start with chain three. And in this case, your chain three is a stitch. It counts as a stitch. Then we're going to make two more double crochets. So one, two, and this in a stitch is called a granny cluster, hence the name granny. Well, one of the reasons why it's called granny square, but this stitch, if you do three double crochets and one stitch, it's called a granny cluster. Okay, chain two. We're gonna put three more double crochets in. One, two, three. Chain two again. Well, we're just gonna repeat this until we have four of the granny clusters separated by two chain, by two, <laughs> by the chains of chain two. <coughs> Okay, so chain two, three more double crochets. Melanie? Yes. Are those next three double crochets, are they in the same stitch or have we move to the next stitch? They are all inside the circle. All inside the circle, okay. Yeah, you go all inside the circle. Chain two, work my last granny cluster of three double crochets. One, two, three. Chain two. And now we are going to slip stitch to the beginning of our chain three. 
So now there's two options. You can uh, join in the top of the chain three. So one, two, three, you would join here. That always looks a little funky to me, so I don't do it. Uh, I actually join in our first stitch right here. And it really does not look different if you uh, make a whole granny square. I have not noticed a difference. I just find it a lot easier to slip stitch into this than the top of the chain. Okay, so. Yeah, they had a question that after you do the last cluster, you chain yes. two and then slip stitch. Exactly, you wanna end up with four clusters separated by the chain twos right here. So you want something that kind of looks like the middle of a little square. Melanie, would you do just the, the part after the, la, the you did the, the, the number four yes. group cluster, just yes. do the, the finale. Oh, sure, of course. So I made my fourth granny cluster. Right. Uh, going to two. Mm -hmm. And here's the option where you either join in the top of the chain three, uh -huh. which I find harder, I join in the first stitch right here. Okay. So just do a slip stitch. Okay, got it. Just okay. like that. And that is your round oh, oh, oh. one. Now, if we were to switch colors, because you know a lot of granny squares, people switch colors for every round. Uh, my biggest advice, and I would just fasten off here, weave in your ends and then start somewhere on the opposite. Because then you're not gonna have your weaved in ends always on the same side of it. Uh, and instead of chaining, you know, adding your yarn, it, it's just easier, fasten it off, bite the bullet, weave it in and start at the different side. But since we're continuing in this pink, we're just gonna slip stitch our way into one of these corners right here. Just gonna move over. I'm just gonna do two slip stitch until I'm right back in one of those corners. And then, it's, and then now we're gonna chain three. Every round starts with the chain three. Now we're gonna make our corners. So our corners are two granny clusters with a chain two in between. And remember, your chain three always counts as a stitch, so it's a little crochet. So we have one, whoops, two, three, chain two, and we're going to stay in this corner. We're not moving. We're gonna stay right in here. We're gonna add another three double crochets. One, two, three. Some, um, di uh, some patterns have you do a chain three here or, um, I go with the classic one that had the chain two, but it doesn't really matter. It's just gonna make a bigger hole. Now we're gonna chain one. You're gonna see a pattern develop. Chain one. So in between the corners, it's always a chain one. So we don't have anything here. We're going right back into a corner. So we're gonna make another corner. Three half double crochets. Chain two, three half double crochet, oh, three double crochet, sorry. So that's gonna be our second corner. Chain one, and there's nothing in here. So we'll go right back in our corner. Three double crochets. Chain two, three half 
three double crochets. Chain one. And we only have a corner spot, so we're gonna do our corner with the two granny clusters divided by a chain two. Chain one, and we're back at the beginning of our round. And same again, either join at the top of your chain three, or like I like to just join at the top of my first stitch. Okay, so slip stitch and just join these together. Oops, come on. Okay, now should look something like this. Don't worry if it's wobbly, granny squares will have to be blocked. Well, guaranteed most of them will have to be blocked to make them nice and even. So now you can see a pattern develop because all we did here, this is all you're gonna do round and round and it's just gonna keep growing and growing. After this, the pattern stays the same unless you know the designer or some kind of adding a fancy thing. But for the basic granny square, we're gonna just keep going around. So we joined here. Let's do one more. Let's we'll have to go back to the corner space. So we're gonna slip stitch back into this corner right here. Okay. Right. We're back in our corner. Chain three, which counts as our first double crochet. And we're in a corner, so we're gonna do our corner stitches. We're gonna do our two grannies separated by the chain two. So we have one, two, three, chain two, still in the same spot. One, two, three. The sides are always chain one. And now we actually have a chain space. So these chain spaces only get one granny cluster. Three double crochets, chain one. So you can see these are your corners always the same and any chain space you're gonna do on the sides are one cluster separated by chain one. Okay, right back in our corner. We're gonna do our granny corner there. Two, three, Chain two, one, two, three. Going to the sides, it's chain one. We're gonna do our one cluster, these sides right here. Chain one, and we're back in the corner. So we're going to do our corner stitch. Oops, that wasn't right. Okay. Granny cluster, chain two, and another granny cluster. Now going back the side, chain one one cluster in our side chain spaces right there. Chain one, and we're back in the corner. Make our corner stitch in here. Cluster, chain two, granny cluster. Back on the side, so we chain one. In our chain space, we're gonna put our one cluster. 
chain one and we're back to our beginning. So again, optional where you like to join here. So I go on the top of the stitch, slip stitch. And go, so try stretch it and you can see how the pattern develops. So next you would do the same thing. You would go back in your corner, you do your brandy clusters, and then you would chain one cluster, chain one cluster in these side spaces. As you, and it just keeps going. It's the same repetitive stitch, which is, makes it very nice. You don't have to think that much about it. And that is the basic <coughs> granny cluster, uh, granny square. Do you take a bunch of these squares and attach them together? Or do you just take one square and keep adding to the outside of it? Whatever you like. <laughs> you can do both. You can do both. Like I make a rag quilt. I just keep all my um, scraps and I just keep adding on, on and on and on until it's as big as a blanket. That's just the, the style I like. You can make... Uh, a bunch of, I mean, most traditional Afghans, you'll see a bunch of little squares that are then joined together. And do you have another square there? Because um, to you might want to show them how to put two together. Jones, you know what? They, on the block. Now, they are different methods. So I don't want to mess you up how you do your squares. I probably do it not very right because I just lay them on top of each other and crochet open okay. it and put the next one onto it there okay. is a technique where you can start your afghan and you join as you go so if you, you would you know you stitch your afghans you like your side piece and then you would add them okay i'm going to add this now and then join as you go there's just so many methods i just <laughs> i just do kind of like the you know like the scrap quilt one that kathy just put it on there Put the next one on, put the next one on, and then make it look neat. Anybody wants to see the solid one that's more filled out? It doesn't have as many holes. Please. Yes. Yes? Yes. The solid granny square is nice because it has a thicker texture, less holes. So it, uh, it's great for purses or warmer blankets. And let me pull up my diagram. Okay. Slip knot, chain five, two, three, four, five. And we're going right back and form a circle, just like we did before. And it's gonna start similar. Uh, also for the solid one, there is about 10 different first rounds you can do it. I'm gonna go the easiest one. So it's chain three and we're gonna make a cluster. So we're adding, and this counts as a stitch. So one, two, three. So we're gonna have make four granny clustered separate by chain three still. So one, two, three, granny cluster. One, two, three. Get in there. And you're doing this all in the circle. Chain three. One, two, three. Chain three, one, two, three. And I'm gonna make my last cluster. One, two, three. Chain three. And the same thing with the. It's here, it is easier if you join on your chain three top. So, where did my. Okay, I don't. Know. So, one, two, three. So, you. With this one, you want to join at the top of your chain three. Okay, let's see. That might be a little tough, but you can wiggle it in there. There we go, slip stitch. So it kind of looks the same. The only thing different is our corners have a chain three. I'm in my round. I'm gonna go back in here.
Okay, so I have my stitches. So my corners in a solid granny square are, you're gonna make two double crochets. You're gonna chain three and two double, oh, two double crochets. And then it's still this one stitch here. You're gonna go right back into the stitch. And stitch your way back down into your next corner. You're gonna do your two double crochets. Chain three, two double crochets. See when you do this, how it sometimes overlaps. So push it down, and then you can see that first stitch, the next double crochet should go in. Stitch in each stitch on this side. Back in our corner. Two double crochet, chain three. Two double crochet. Can you lay flat for a moment? Yeah, sure. Okay. So it's gonna look like this. What do I need to come closer? And we'll go back down our sides. And we're in our last corner. So we're gonna do our corner. Two double crochet, chain three, two double crochet. Whoops, two double crochet. And we're just gonna slip stitch. We're not gonna chain anything. We're just gonna slip stitch. You wanna slip stitch. One, two, three in that third loop. That can be a little tricky because I pulled it really hard. So kind of wriggle it a little bit. And just kind of push that in there. Okay, so, and that is, the, it's a little crooked, but that's okay. Question. Yes. So, so if you look at the fabric right now, yes. Um, each side should have like six, double crochets yes and then the corner pieces six not seven it should let me count my corners okay so the corners it's three on the top of the double crochets and then your corners so, so you should have your, your corners and then you should have three in between Let me frog this one. Okay. Let's do it again. Yeah, see that that's the problem with sometimes with these filled uh with the solid granny squares. Ah, get in there. When you join sometimes. So uh, let's see. One, two. Oh, I was in the right one. Okay. Join. Okay, let's do this row again. Chain three, which counts. And one, two. So your side should have three stitches. It should match what you had on the bottom here. So there's three stitches. And then I'm going to go in the corner. And with the solid granny or the filled granny, there is no uh, chaining in between. And sometimes when you switch from granny to this, I always get messed up because I want to chain in between. 
and I end up with something wonky. See, and I make my I made three clusters because we did the other one. <laughs> so my corner is going to be two double crochets, chain three, two double crochets. So scooch that over, make sure you see that stitch. And I'm going to put three double crochets in this side. I'm going back in our corner. Two double crochets. Chain three, two double crochets. Slide that over. We're gonna have three double crochets on the side here. One, two, three. Back in our corner, we're doing our corner stitches. Two double crochets. Chain three. Last it. Two double crochets. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay, scooch it over so you can see that stitch. And three double crochets. Inside. And we are in our last corner. We're just gonna do our corner stitch again. Okay. Two, three. Why can I never crochet so smoothly on camera like I do at home? <laughs> All right, before we slip stitch and join, we don't have to chain anything, so. We're just gonna count carefully. One, two, three. So we're gonna go in this little stitch right here. Okay. And slip stitch. Okay. Now you can imagine if you keep going, let me go, go a little bit just to show the difference. So you go here. Do my side, do my corners, two, three. Probably should have picked a different one, but I thought the other one might be a little bit too floppy to show. So, one, two, move over, and then do this side. Here. Right. So just as an example, as you can see how it fills in all the spaces over here. Oh. Right there. So you're only gonna have like these little, I call them like little raindrops <laughs> up the corner. Mm -hmm. There's different versions where you can make a filled center to you. Uh, I figured we'll just do the easier one. But so it's gonna be filled and it's gonna look this. It's a filled granny square. But so this Hello. is a solid or filled granny square. So you can see you're only gonna have like these little raindrops <laughs> right here and the sides are filled. So it makes it good for a, um, a kid's blanket too. Or baby blanket because you don't have the the big holes you would have then in the granny square. And I will post some instructions to you. I posted diagrams and I noticed not a lot of people do the diagrams, so I'm gonna find a good um, video uh, to share as well. That is it. Mm -hmm. That is how you make the granny squares. Now, what I would recommend is, especially if you want to make an afghan, you have to block. Now, I have one of these things. 
And um, I love it because you can just, um, you know, whatever method you use to moisten your creations, uh, you just keep stacking it on top. So like you have one and then I just keep stacking them right there. And I just let them dry like this. So stack, I would, I mean, you have to block if you want something with nice symmetry, but uh, invest it. I mean, this wasn't too bad. And uh, the nice thing is you can move these pecs around. So these little, the steel rods, so you can have the teeny tiny ones. I think this is eight by eight is the biggest one. So highly recommend one of these boards to get. Do you have something you could show us that um, you were talking about making all, using up all your scraps, making granny squares, and what does that actually look like once it gets going? I'm well, let me, let me switch my camera because I'm wearing it, so. <laughs> oh, you, you wear blankets? I'm very impressed. Uh, I said I was oh. gonna make a cardigan, I didn't. So I just made a little shrug. Let me see. That is so oh, cute. Pretty. Ah, that is awesome. Okay. That looks Lovely. so cute on you. So it's just a granny square. Yeah. That was kind of folded. I didn't have time to make the whole cardigan, but so I just folded it all the corners in the middle. And I just put a little tiny seam right here to make an armhole. That's awesome. So that's what you can do if you don't want to make a, a whole afghan. <laughs> yeah. Are you showing us Granny Square soap sack? Well, no, I just what what she so you're, just you're taught. Gonna... That looks so good. Beautiful. Here's the back of it. Oh, Look that at looks that, so good. What that I what looks... I like to do with purses. I like to do one side this and then put the wrong side out on the other side, just because I like the stitches, even on the wrong side. Yeah. <laughs> this is the fill, this is the solid granny square. These are two granny squares I just put together. See, I just seamed them up on the side. Right there. And then I just did a couple of rows in the round on top of it. Like I said, more than Afghans, I love making little mandala doilies. <laughs> so here's this one. That's little awesome. Little tassel. Or so. a pillow, if you're really happy. Or, uh, yes, you can take two of these, make pillow covers. Oh my, you can make them tiny, make earrings, you can make, make necklaces. It's it's more than an Afghan. So, and now Melanie, what's the history of the granny square? Well, the granny square. <laughs> So it was, I mean, um, using scraps has been around since uh, the beginning of humankind, of clothing, I believe. Uh, so Afghans were nothing new. The actual granny square pattern uh, was not published until 1891, was the very first one. And it was not even a pattern. It was a, somebody did an etching in a, a publication. And... Um, it was not invented for Afghans. The, it was invented or used for making baby ropes, ropes for grown-ups, and baby sacks. So they would put the baby, you know, if you had a baby and you didn't want to waste all the big quilt, they would put the baby in, cinch him on the chest, and then put him to sleep. <laughs> put him to sleep sacks. So so they were actually made for um garments first and then somebody nobody knows uh said oh hey i'm gonna make an afghan out of it it's i mean it became popular in the 60s and 70s so um but it's been around it's iconic it's uh, unique to the u.s so most countries like i'm from germany we call it americanisches crochet which is american crochet style so it's uh, it's definitely the most iconic piece of American crochet. I consider it the most iconic. Um, the reason why it's called Granny Square, uh, a little insulting, <laughs> maybe. Uh, yes, it's sweet to think of grannies, but um, the publication in the book said, um, because the matrons and the grannies of the home were no longer useful in the in the hard labor. Uh, they should be put to work on 
tasked sitting down. <laughs> and that's why it's called the granny square. So it's, <laughs> so it's like, oh, that's so sweet. No, it was not such a sweet history, you know. <laughs> they actually said, I think, I believe that, I have to bring, I have to get the book out. I couldn't find it, but I, I believe it said because the matrons and the grannies were not use, were useless now with the hard labor outside. They should be assigned all sitting down tasks. So that's how it got, got the name. Well, that's a little insulting, <laughs> but uh, I, I but I do like that it's classic. It is classic Americana. So, oh, yeah. uh, but I like that it's been. It's more than just the Afghan, and I and I like that because we we think of it as every every grandmother's house that I've ever gone to has the Granny Square Afghan over a lazy boy or a sofa in it. So thank oh, you yeah. for showing us all the ways we can use the granny square oh, and the sure. variations of it, the, the traditional granny square and a way that we can use it for a baby blanket for our partner charities now. So I, I love that. So if you made a granny square today, you want to hold it up and I'm going to take a <gasps> screenshot of it before we stop <gasps> our recording. So show your granny square today. And I'm gonna take a quick picture. Show, ready, everybody? Okay, hold it up. Ready, all right. One, two, three, smile. Thank everybody for coming to our Granny Square class today. This was lots of fun. We have lots of different ways to use it. And this was just a really fun, different class for us today. So thanks, Melanie, as always, for your expertise and doing that. And thanks everybody for coming. This was a great class.